walk the dogs, school drop-off, meetings from 10 to 3, take kids to soccer, then no time left for a jog. When everyone else is relying on you, it's easy to put your needs last. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist online, so you can show up for yourself the way you do for others. Visit BetterHelp.com slash positive to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash positive. We're at the top of pretty much everything. And here are boomers. Hey, I got my house and my social security, and I'm good. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. Your visit is always discreet. Stand by for action. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is the Bob and Jeff Show. KFH Radio, Bob Lutz, Jason Duda in today for Jeff. Uh, welcome, dudes. How are you? Um, just fine. It's a Monday. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. You've been up. I, I kind of lived in your world today. I got up at 5 a.m. It feels like I've been up for seven days. I honestly don't know how you do it. Um, by, by eight o'clock, nine o'clock, it feels like you need a nap. Yes, it does. Every day. Every day. And then the time change doesn't help. Moving it back, moving it up, moving it all over the place, just throw, especially if you have dogs. I don't know how misty is, but our dogs are like 6 a.m., 7 p.m. when they well, wake So at listen. 4.45 Sunday morning, they're going goofy. I just, no. I've been up uh, forever, and it uh, feels like I've just been up and um, making the best of it. Uh, could easily nod off during the show, except for... It's a whale of a show Is I've it? put together. Oh, let me hear it. I'm just so curious on the whale of a show you've put together for us today. Here's, a, here's what we have. At 225, Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagles. Shockers getting at it tonight against Lipscomb out at Coke Arena. Uh, everybody playing in college basketball tonight. Wichita State has a pretty good foe in Lipscomb. Now, you might hear that and say, sounds like they got a lisp. Uh, but they're a pretty good basketball team. And so we'll, we'll see uh, what the Shockers do. At 245, Jay Spavlovich, the head football coach at McPherson High School, uh, they've moved into the uh, the quarterfinals now of the Class 5A football playoffs. Uh, they did so with a resounding win over Bueller on Friday, in which one of their players had five interceptions. What? Yeah. You can't make it up. Five picks? Five picks, two pick sixes, uh, three others. They should have just let him play by himself. Just a remarkable performance. That is impressive. And uh, we'll ask Coach Pavlovich about that coming up at 245. At 325 today, C.J. Moore, one of the college basketball writers for The Athletic. Uh, He's based out of Kansas City, so he knows our area of the country very well. We'll talk to him. We've got KU opening tonight against North Carolina Central, if you're interested. And K-State playing out in Vegas late tonight, 9 o'clock. No way I'll make it. No. But they have USC in one of the intriguing matchups of the day in college basketball. So all that coming up on the show today. Holy man, I'm tired already. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well done, Bob. It well is done. a lot. Thank you so much. I yes. appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, I've had time to arrange for guests since I've been up uh, forever <laughs> and didn't sleep well either. No? Every, anytime I know I have to get up early, there's no way I'm going to sleep because it's just on my mind. Right. I'm not meant for early mornings. That's not me. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to sleep effectively like i thought about going to bed last night at 7 30 but i'm not tired yet yeah you can't do it so i tried at nine tossed and turned uh i probably slept an hour and a half last night and uh miserable miserable how do you do it well you when you got something like that when you just got to get once in a while just i just keep your usual routine and then if you needed a nap that day after you got home take one now, I get up at 3.30-ish, 3.45-ish, just about, well, five days a week. 
and I got a routine about nine o'clock. I, I go down and I got about an hour I'll piddle or I'll fall asleep. So it's kind of my, but every once in a while, it'll be eight o'clock and I'll be like, I got to go to bed and then I'm out. So I don't know. I guess it is. I never you make the best. I'm, I'm not an, I was never an early morning guy, obviously with playing hockey for 20 years and coaching because a lot of those nights, even at home, you don't get home till 11 or 12 o'clock. Right. right. There's no way you can be an early so morning. That's usual. Practice was at 10 every morning. Had to be there at 9 so you can get up 8, 8.30. Get ready, go to the rink, have your day, and away you go. So when I started doing this stuff, having to get up, I said the same thing. There's no way I'm going to make it. There's just no way. And then your body gets used to it, and now it's whatever. My, now I, wake uh, up, I wake up every morning now. My get up time, my entire life, has been seven thirty to eight thirty. That's when I'm most comfortable. Um, now, not my entire life. I mean, I was a teenager once, and I slept till noon. noon. But in my work life, seven thirty, eight thirty, and more toward eight thirty, if we can make that happen, is where I'm most comfortable. I don't like uh, anything, be- anything, anything before seven thirty. I'm not on board with. Well, it's not nice. It's not fun waking up when it's still pitch black outside. You know? At least we got another hour of light now. We get another hour of light In the now? morning. In the it morning. Gets, it gets lighter not for sooner. Me. Not for me. No, you're up. It doesn't matter. It five does, this morning, one They need to light. move it six hours for me to see light in the morning. Well, I feel terrible for uh, you. You almost do. I, I really do. It's but the problem terrible. is now is that when you go home, like most people who go home from at five or six o'clock in a month it's going to be dark when you're going home i don't know if i like it i don't know is it Um, worth the extra hour in the summer here's what yes for me and my purposes i like it because i got to get teams out in march to practice space well that's true and they need that extra hour of light we start on march 11th which which is when we spring forward so I need that extra hour of light or I'm in trouble. I can't have practices. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, why does everybody, I just soon keep the daylight all year round. Well, why, why didn't I hear that they were thinking of not doing daylight savings anymore? Well, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but I need the light in March. Well, I guess if you left it, spring it ahead in March again and then leave it. We only have four months of this. No, oh, I know. So get over it. Oh, I'm okay with it. Okay. Trust me. You remember where I came from? Yes, this you were is dark. Nothing. It was dark all the time. All right, we had a uh, an eventful Saturday in college football, especially for our teams. Kansas State, I gave up on. Kind of left them. Well, they looked horrible. Came the back to half. them. They rallied. Had a chance. And then they kind of, I don't know. I, I went through so many emotions with K-State. I don't know where I'm at with them. Uh, my Kick the field goal. Exactly. Take it to the second overtime. Why wouldn't you? You got the ball to start with. Um, and see what see what you can do. Don't don't get funky on me. It wasn't fourth and one. It wasn't fourth and goal from the one. It was They were on the six yeah. or the seven. And then they ran a bad play, and it never got. Uh, I know you don't like or trust your field goal kicker or your kicking team. But if you if you can't make that, and I know they missed a PAT in a short field goal, I, I understand all that. But are you going to tell me that the, the, your likelihood of winning that football game is higher going for it on fourth down than it is kicking a field goal and going to second overtime? I, I can't buy into that. No, I agree. I, I'm I'm with you. I couldn't believe it. I was watching the game and I'm sitting there thinking, what what is he doing? Like, what is he doing? I didn't it's like 20, it. It was a what a twenty yard field goal attempt, twenty five yard field goal attempt. I mean, yeah, the kid, I understand the kid missed a couple, but he's probably going to make that. Well, he made a game tying field goal from much farther. Exactly. Him, you know, if you don't believe in him, cut him. Well, if you're not going to use him, then he shouldn't be there. Um. So anyway, uh, they, I, the uh, coach Kleiman said after the game that had Texas scored a touchdown and K State scored a touchdown, he would have gone for two to try to end it. 
I disagree with that too. Play the long game against these guys. Playing the long game is what got you back in the game. Yeah, but I don't mind him going for it from the two or the three. That's fine. But outside the five, I have a problem that play, with it. And, that play never developed. And especially with the way that game went. I mean, they were not in the game in the first half. I mean, it was bad. They K-State, I mean, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. Texas is doing whatever they wanted, and they battled back. So in that situation, yeah, I would have played the long game. I, I'm with you on that, especially from the five. If they had scored a touchdown and went for two, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. But where they were, you're sitting on the six or seven, and you're going to go for it on fourth down. Is well, they were inside just, the they were inside that. Oh, but, I don't think so. Yeah, they were. They no, were inside the five. No. Yeah. No. Yes. I, I'll go back and check if I. They can were. Here. Still don't like it. I didn't like it either. But had they been in the seven, I would have. That would have been a. Uh, I was positive prime. they were outside the five. Eh, don't, but don't whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't go to your phone. It'll take you forever. We'll, well be well because I can't get no service down here because every it's like a dungeon. Ever since I remodeled, I always think when I come down here that I'm never gonna get out. Well, I get service just fine down here. Well, yeah, but you you're on your Wi-Fi. Well, get on my Wi-Fi. Well, you, I asked you once. You said I ain't giving you my. I'm password. not giving you my Wi-Fi. See exactly. Not gonna happen. I'll be happy to give you my Wi-Fi. Oh well. But uh, you know, make things happen over there. 869-1240, that is the IHOP hotline. Uh, KU goes down to Ames. Let me see. Did you get that game right? No, I took Iowa State. No, you took Iowa State. Well, of course I did. In fact, you and Jeff both took Iowa State. I took Kansas for three. Uh, I'm sorry, for six points. By the way, I went eight and one. Uh, I think we probably ought to mention that. Uh, I got my Missouri pick right. Probably ought to mention that. Yeah, of course. I knew this was coming all day. Well, I mean, I so mean, please you continue. Probably ought to mention it. It's Got funny. My... It's funny you mention this when you do really well. Well, I do really well almost every oh. week. <laughs> okay. Funny, I got my Philly pick right. That well, yeah, you got but, it right by the skin of my teeth. Yeah. But I got it right. They shouldn't have. But that's the way the game ended. So you got it right. Funny, I got that Kansas City pick right, which was in doubt. Uh, so anyway. Just a great week for you. You didn't do so well. Uh, but I'm just that's got, okay. I always wait till Thanksgiving to catch my yeah. stride. Now it's Thanksgiving. It's always Thanksgiving. When are you going to get a KU game right, though? Man. When I pick them, they lose. When I don't, they win. I, I don't know. I'm not going to pick them anymore. I'm gonna, they were impressive. And you got to start. They were. I, sh- hey, I've said that I, I like KU. Like, there's not, I, they got a good team. They got a good program right now. Coach is good. Every, I, I like them, but they're playing a lot of tough games and a lot of numbers that are like, well, geez, what do you do? And if you go back through my history, I'm going to play against them. Now, KU Pat is loving it because he gets to give it to me all the time. But when we had KU Pat on last week, he said this is going to be a tough one. It was a tough And one. I thought Iowa State at home, basically two and a half. They just got to win the game. I thought, you know what? I'm going to take the home team here, which I usually do in that situation. And I lost. I like, K, I like KU pretty easily in that one. Now, it was a difficult game, but their running game's good. The unsung hero of their season is Jason Bean. I hope he's not unsung because he's a second-team quarterback uh, playing at a top 25 level. And how many teams can, can get that? Not many. Out of a second-team quarterback. Not many. At the collegiate level. Uh, he deserves kudos, and I've become a big fan of his, and I kind of like KU football. Um, I like watching them. I like their emotion. I like the way they play. I, I, I think I'm kind of a KU guy in football. Well, I, I'm KU, K-State right now. When they're on, I enjoy watching the games. Like, I look forward to those games. They're the only two teams I've really paid attention to in college. I'll watch the big games if they're on and that sort of thing. But if KUK State's on, it's on the TV. I'm going to watch it. They're fun I did to watch. watch uh, I did watch a good chunk, not nearly all, but a good chunk of Missouri, Georgia, because I put my reputation out there. That you did. I, I told you guys that while I didn't think Missouri would win that game, and they had a chance to win that game. 
They were in it. Uh, I didn't think they would win the game, but I thought 15 and five, 15 point five points, was an absurd total in that conference in a year where there's not there's not a dominant team. Georgia's good. They're not dominant. They're not like they have been. That's the most I've watched of Georgia this year. And I was well, why didn't you guys why didn't you guys listen to thinking me? Thinking to myself. Jeff and man. Max both went nine on Georgia. Well you only went five at least. Exactly. I wasn't that high on them, but I thought their defense, but their defense obviously isn't as good as I thought it was. Well, Missouri's got uh in Luther Burden, one of the finest receivers in the country. And they're they're a good team. Missouri's a legitimate I can say this for one of the first times. They're a legitimate SEC type of team this year. Can they sustain it? I don't know. But they're pretty good this year. Uh, and I thought they'd go to Georgia and at least be in the game. Uh, yes, they were. Didn't see them losing by more than two touchdowns. Well, you were correct. Well, let's say that a little more often. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you were correct. But it, it's a good weekend in college football. The NFL started. I got up early yesterday. As didn't did I. Like the, didn't like the look of that place in Germany. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I didn't like it. You could tell it was a little sloppy. Miami was really sloppy in the first half. They looked like they had I'm they talking about the sleeping. facility. I know you're talking about the facility, but I watched the game. Obviously, it was with the Chiefs. You're going to have to pay attention are to Are the it. Chiefs boring? They are. They're not the same team that we're They're used boring. to with Mahomes. It, it, they are. I don't know. You're right. That's a good word for it. They're boring to watch. They used to be electric and fun. Well, and you, you, you just throwing couldn't the wait ball to all watch. over and the defense, the other team's throwing the ball, and you knew that it didn't matter because Patrick, if he had 10 seconds left, was going to get a field goal at the end of the game. They were fun. Now it's just kind of, eh. They don't have anybody uh, that you really, Kelsey is still very good. But he's not but he's slowing flashy. down. Well, yeah, he's, he's mid teams are, teams are more able to take him away. Uh, they got 19 young wide receivers, none of whom are any good. I, I felt like I was watching the, the Raiders yesterday. I mean, the Chiefs are still good because they have Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and a good defense. Yes. They're much better defensively than they've been. By far. Uh, but offensively, oh, man, that was – that was not that much fun to watch. Well, no, they're not putting up 35 points anymore. They're usually in the 20s. Mahomes is an average, not average, is an above average quarterback, obviously. But in terms of fantasy football, he's not giving me what I need. No, because I traded C.J. Stroud for him. That was not a good move. No, it wasn't. No, and thank you, by the way, because I'm crushing you this week. Yeah, you are. Oh, well. Oh, that one doesn't matter, right? No, it matters. Yeah, but it I, does. But I'm two and seven. What do I care? That's all right. I got no hope. As long as I win this one. And you're not going into the playoffs either. As long as I win this one, I beat you and Jeff this year. That's all that matters. <laughs> well, if that, that's a low bar. Yeah, well, if you keep it low, you'll never be disappointed. I'll tell you that. That is a low bar. Uh, and then the Eagles-Cowboys was a good game, exciting at the end, but Dallas... Dallas should have Dallas, won. Well, probably. Philadelphia gave it to them. The, yeah. No, uh, I, I agree. But, you know, Dak steps out. How do you ha get a point? pass interference call at midfield when Dallas is starting inside its 15? Uh, it just uh, what, what? Is it fixed? I mean, it's not fixed. Why would you get that penalty? There's no way they're going to complete the pass. And then they made another mistake, uh, penalty wise. To let Dallas got the ball all the way to the six yard line, before they imploded. Yeah, um, that had to be frustrating for both fan bases to watch that. Philly comes out on top uh, last night. Joe Burrow, that team looked nowhere for its first three games of the year. He was hurt. Bengals looked terrible. Bengals was hurt. They had a lot of injuries to start. Now with. they've won five in a row, and they look like. Uh, well, they look, they're healthy and they look good. I mean, Burrow looks like the Joe Burrow we thought we were going to get. Yes. But he was hurt before the season started. Yes, he was. And then he came into the season, he was still hurt, shouldn't have probably played. If he gave himself a week or two, probably would have been better. But he wants to play. I don't blame him for that to go out there. 
But you can see that they're healthy now. And Cincinnati's got a good team. They've had a good team for the last couple years. Joe Burrow, you got Chase. Mixon looks a lot better running the ball. They got a lot of weapons there, and their defense isn't too bad. Cincinnati's going to be tough. Cincinnati's a team to watch. Cincinnati's so tough. So is Baltimore. Baltimore's tough. Uh, I, they they took it to Seattle. They yeah. got their their defense is really good again. They can run the ball. Will the Chiefs be in the Super Bowl? Yes or no? Man, gonna have to play it. They're gonna go through a gauntlet, but I think they're still gonna end up with a a buy. They got a good chance to still get a buy. Super Bowl? Yes or no? I'm going to go, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to go yes. I don't see how. They got. I, I don't see how you can say that. defense is good, and they got Patrick Mahomes on the other side. And for some reason, he's so good, he can find a way to win. It doesn't matter what the, is going on in the game. He's proven that for the last five years. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter if it's a 42-40 game or a 2017 game. He's going to find a way. Well, he always finds a way, and their defense is good enough this year. To me, Baltimore and Cincinnati are better right now. Maybe they'll. Maybe well, I'm the, not arguing that point. Maybe whatsoever. the Chiefs will unlock something. They don't look good enough offensively to be able to get to the Super Bowl. I'm a no. As of That's November six, you just you just right. jumped on their bandwagon. Now you're saying I reserve the right to change yeah. my mind as I see more. As I as I sit here today. Baltimore is the best team in the AFC. Well, I can't argue with that right now. Sitting here right now over the last few weeks, you're going to get no argument from me. And, and it, at home, they've just been destroying good teams. Seattle, Detroit, they're winning by 30 at home. It will be Baltimore against a team not named the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think Philadelphia will get to the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know who will out of the NFC because there are no good teams. None. Well, I wouldn't say they're not good. Who's good? In the Philly, NFC. You can't say Philly's no, no. not good. They're good. Who else is good in the NFC? That's tough to find. Right. There's 16 teams. 16? Give me one that's good outside of Philadelphia. San oh. Francisco? They'll be all right. They had the bye this week. I think they'll straighten things Detroit? out. Detroit? Well, I do like Detroit. I, I don't think those two are bad teams. They're not bad teams. Dallas? They're But they're not. I don't they're, know. They're not Cincinnati right, right now or Baltimore. I got to take a break. We Why? got Taylor Eldridge coming oh. up. We're going to talk to him about the Shockers. First action tonight at home. 6.30 tip against Lipscomb. We'll get with uh, Taylor Eldridge next. This is Bob and Jeff on KFH. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Taylor Eldridge with us, beat reporter for Wichita State from the Wichita Eagle and Kansas.com. Uh, alas, we have college basketball on the fray tonight. Wichita State at home against Lipscomb at Coke Arena. Taylor, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Looking forward to basketball season. Yeah, it's here in full uh, in full costume. So, if you have three questions about the Shockers going into this season uh, that you want to see answered relatively early on, what would uh, what would a couple or th all three of those be? I think uh, a good place to start will be what does the ball handling look like? That's been a uh, a pretty big concern, I would say, in the fan base. You know, you look at the roster, not really any true point guards. You know, Bijan Cortez was just deemed ineligible. Uh, so they're going to roll with Xavier Bell, Colby Rogers, Harlan Beverly. You know, those guys are more combo guards, more wing players than true point guards. So what does the ball handling look like on this team? I think uh, they will be probably better than what it seems like a lot of fans are pretty down on them. But I think with Mills and this coaching staff, I think they're going to come up with other ways to get the job done. I just said today in my story that I think Kenny Poto is going to lead the team in assists. And I don't think he's going to 
you know, average, you know, anything crazy like five or six, I think it's more probably around three and a half. But I think you're going to see different ways for this team to to distribute the ball handling uh, load. So that's one. Two would be does the outside shooting get better under Paul Mills, you know, for the last five seasons now, which I'll say has not been a good three-point shooting team. Obviously, Mills has had great success with that at Oral Roberts. And, uh, you know, Colby Rogers having him healthy or having him, uh, you know, being able to play the addition of Dalen Riginal, those two should really help with the three-point shooting. I think Xavier Bell should bounce back after a really, really cold non-conference season. He kind of returned to form in conference play last season. I think he should be back in the, the mid to high 30s for sure. So uh, will the outside shooting return? Because that's going to open up the offense. And then three, can this team be great? at rebounding. I think that's going to be the big advantage uh, for this team. You know, it seems like they're pretty dead set on playing two centers. Uh, Kenny Poto and Quincy Ballard were the pair uh, that started the exhibition game. And uh, Mill said that they had a uh, pretty big success against Iowa in the close scrimmage. And then obviously in the, the exhibition, they double up a division two team in rebounding. So, you know, you play two centers like that. And you have great offensive rebounders and guys like Isaac Abide, uh, original uh, guys like that. They should be a good offensive rebounding team. And that can cure a lot uh, of offensive woes. You know, if you shoot low percentages, it doesn't matter if you get a ton of offensive rebounds. It's kind of like what Houston has done. Uh, You know, Houston's never really shot the ball extremely well, but they've been so good crashing the glass. Uh, getting second chances, second, third, fourth chances. Uh, That's how they make up for, you know, lower shooting percentages. So uh, that's an advantage Wichita State should be able to exploit this year. We'll see how long they'll be able to roll with it. You know, you got to defend on the other end. And on offense, you got to have good spacing to play with two centers. So those are the three big ones in my head just off the top. Well, Taylor, uh, who are we looking at? on the offensive side and then maybe shut down on the defensive side, who are a couple guys on both sides that this team is probably going to rely on a little bit more, or is this going to be one of those teams where it's just going to be everybody every night? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, they don't have a ton of depth. So I think you're going to see a, a high reliance on the starters. You know, I think all of these guys are going to be playing, uh, you know, at least 30 minutes and, uh, Kenny Poto is the name to know. Obviously, Shocker fans will be familiar with him. Uh, he's played the last two years. And I think a lot of things are going to revolve around Kenny Poto. I don't know if he's going to put up crazy stats, counting stats, but I think he's going to do a lot of just about everything on the basketball court. And, uh, you know, kind of similar to, you know, what Craig Porter did for them last year. Um, I think he's going to be, uh, you know, the best player on this team. The leading scorer, I think, will probably be Colby Rogers. Uh, and he's another one, you know, sat out last year. Uh, mentality uh, made a ton of threes at a really high rate at Siena the last time we saw him on the floor. Uh, and that's another big question. Will, you know, we've seen good shooters come to Wichita State before and then just completely fall off. Uh, can Colby Rogers buck that trend? Can he have a great three point shooting season? Uh, you know, maybe the best. Uh, you know, I think he has a chance to be the best shooter since, you know, the Landry Shamit, uh, Connor Frank camp, Austin Reeves team from six years ago. So um, that's, that's another name to know. Colby Rogers, he sat out last year. And then I really like Harlan Beverly too. I uh, transferred from Miami. He's coming off a major back injury, but uh, he says he's fully healthy now. It's been almost two years since the injury and, he was a former four-star recruit, you know, played last season on a Final Four team at Miami. Uh, I, I really like the little things that he does. I think he'll lead this team in steals. He has great instincts on the defensive end, uh, passing the ball. You know, he's going to make a couple flashy passes, turnovers. That's got to be the thing that he's got to improve on, just the decision-making, knowing when to when to fit those passes in and when to, to holster. So, I think Harlan Beverly is another name to kind of uh, keep in the back of your mind because uh, I think he could have a really nice season for WSU. Taylor Eldridge, our guest from the Wichita Eagle. We're talking Shocker basketball. They kick it off tonight against Lipscomb uh, Coke Arena. Lipscomb coming off a 21-year last year. 
So a decent foe to open against. You know, Taylor, I haven't gone and done the math, but how many years in a row now have the Shockers had an NBA player on their roster? Uh, Craig Porter Jr. now uh, making it happen with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, you've got Dexter Dennis, who's on a two-way with uh, Dallas. I may be missing a year in there somewhere where they didn't have an NBA player on their roster, but this was a pretty impressive run in terms of getting guys to the highest level. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, yeah, having those two ways get a little little confusing because, you know, are they actual NBA players? But, you know, someone like Craig Porter who's, you know, seeing time in the NBA, I, I certainly think he counts. But, yeah, I mean, they, they have had a nice little run. You know, Ricky Council – also another one on a two-way contract right now. So uh, Jaime Echenique, you know, had his, uh, you know, minute in the NBA where he, you know, became the first Colombian. So, yeah, the talent has been there on the rosters for sure. You know, it has been a pretty impressive run. Uh, you know, Grant Sherfield's kind of knocked on the door as well. So uh, there's a lot of former Shockers. And obviously Austin Reeves, you know, just going back to that 17-18 that team, uh, you know, Landry Shamit. So, yeah, they, they have had a quite a long list of, you know, teams with NBA uh, players on it. Uh, you know, is there one on this year's team? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that, but uh, I, I do think Colby Rogers has a chance to make a lot of money, you know, playing professional basketball uh, with his shooting ability and, and Kenny Poto with his skills. I think he's going to be, you know, a great fit at worst, you know, overseas uh, just with, you know, the way that he sees the game, his passing, uh, you know, if he can get his shooting ability back. So I think there's some some uh, nice pros on this team. Are the NBA guys, I'm not sure about that yet. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see how they do this year. But, uh, yeah, it has been – that is an interesting point to, to see how many NBA players have been on the rosters for WSU, you know, these last, you know, five, six, seven years. Taylor Eldridge with us from the Wichita Eagles. So – I view this as kind of a honeymoon period for Paul Mills. I don't know if the fan base would be in agreement with me, but this is probably the change of direction in the program that you could argue needed to happen after Greg Marshall left. Um, I think it might take a little bit for Paul Mills to get his program initiated with the kind of players he's trying to get into this program. Do you agree with that assessment that the fan base maybe needs to be just a tad patient? Not that you throw away this year. I think they have uh, a chance to do something this season. But I think the best is in the future. Yeah, yeah. I think you just look at the roster construction, too. And, you know, there's a ton of juniors on this year's team. And you can kind of see that, you know, this is the year to lay the foundation, to get the culture going, to set the standard. You know, you hear phrases like that all the time with Paul Mills. And uh, this is the year to kind of lay that cement. And then I, I think next year, that would be the fair expectation. Okay, now we need to see, you know, some improvement, some something to, you know, get excited about. I think this year, I mean, uh, it's going to be, uh, you just look at the roster. I mean, it's hard to, to not say that there's less talent on the roster this year compared to last year when you had a guy like Craig Porter, you know, all-conference player, obviously now doing his thing in the NBA. Jaquan Walton, super talented. He's going to be a starter for Memphis, who's, you know, a borderline top 25 team who's absolutely loaded. So, uh, you know, it's hard to, to think that they didn't take a down uh, downturn in talent. But uh, I think with the, the system uh, in place for Paul Mills, you know, everyone I've talked to has raved about, you know, his culture setting, his X's and O's, you know, that stuff's legit. And I think just the, the, the team chemistry, the cohesion, you know, last year's team, I don't think they had that. You know, they, were, they weren't super, super tight. I think this year's team, just from talking to them, it seems like for at least now, you know, to start off the year before they play any games, it does seem like they have that chemistry. So I think that's going to matter too. So in my story today, I said I think they end up about the same as they did last year, you know, right around 500, uh, you know, in conference play overall. I think that's. Uh, you know, a fair expectation for this team in, for, in the first year. And then I think once you, uh, you know, if he can retain the core of this group, and then obviously he's got two, uh, you know, top, you know, 200 freshmen coming in, and I think he's going to fill the holes, 
you know, in the transfer portal after this season, I think it is a, you know, a fair expectation to expect, you know, something to happen next year, you know, a step in the right direction to get, you know, shocker basketball back in the mix, you know, maybe in the postseason, uh, you know, uh, push higher in the conference standings, and then you get the ball rolling. But I think that is a fair assessment. You need to have some patience this first year. Well, you answered part of my question. I was curious on where you kind of had the Shockers this year, but also curious on what do you think of the AAC overall this year um, compared to last? Are we looking at a little bit better, a little worse, or obviously we're speculating right now? Yeah, anytime you lose uh, Houston, who, you know, was one of the best teams in the country last season, it's going to get a little worse on the top. But I think with the addition of Florida Atlantic, obviously they're coming off the uh, Final Four run. As I said earlier, Memphis absolutely loaded with talent. I think those two are head and shoulders above anybody else in the conference. I do think FAU is going to take a little step back. You know, if you look at, you know, where they were before that postseason run, you know, they were, you know, they were a nine seed, I think, eight eight or nine seeds. So, you know, it wasn't like they were, you know, killing it before that. So I think that's more of, you know, who they're going to be this year. So I think Memphis, you know, with just the talent that they have, I think, uh, you know, they would probably be my pick to win the conference. FAU is clearly two behind them. And then after that, you know, it does kind of get a little wide open. But I think that the new teams in the conference, the North Texas, UAB, teams like that are going to be in the mix, uh, you know, above. You know, WSU was pegged eighth by the league coaches. And, you know, I think they can outperform that. But, you know, I I don't think, you know, fans should be coming into the season expecting a top four, top top five finish because the conference is you know pretty good uh maybe you know at the top you know you're looking at probably two NCAA tournament teams but there's a lot of solid you know NIT quality teams behind them you know uh maybe three four five uh so WSU it would be an accomplishment if they are able to crack you know uh, if they're able to get up to like six uh five or six that would be quite the accomplishment this year I think uh for the Shockers because the conference is pretty solid behind those top two. Taylor, we look forward to watching and reading your coverage as the season goes on uh, and getting you on the show periodically. Thank you for being on today. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagle talking Shocker basketball. That's our wheelhouse. Yes, it is. Little Shocker hoops. Jace Pavlovich joins us. He's the head football coach at McPherson. They're coming off a big win on Friday night in the Class 4A playoffs against Bueller. That earns them a trip to Andover this Friday to to face Andover Central. Uh, Coach Pavlovich, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on your season so far. It's uh, it's exciting uh, to keep advancing. But before we get into your team overall, five interceptions (laughs) by one player. I thought yeah, it was that was a uh, no. It it uh, it was legitimate. Uh, he, you know, Tegan played played, you know, obviously very well uh, on Friday night, and and uh, he's uh, he's been you know playing well all season long. But uh, you know, to get to five interceptions is is pretty amazing. And and uh, he'll be the first to tell you though that it was it was a a complete team effort because. We were able to, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, shut down their running game and, and force them to throw the football quite a bit. And, uh, you know, and, and he was in the right spot at the right time, you know, very, very often. So it was a it was a very dominant individual performance. But, uh, you know, overall, defensively, we played really well. And we're talking about Tegan Haynes, uh, who did have Correct. those five interceptions. Including two pick sixes. Have you ed- <laughs> have you ever seen anything like that in a game before? Because uh, I Bob was telling me this, and I said, "Are you serious? It wasn't the team? It was one no. guy." Because <laughs> after you know, you know, and I, I'm sure you've been around a while and you've watched sports, and I'm mm-hmm. sitting here thinking to myself, like thinking about all the college games, all NFL games, high school. I've never heard of something like this. Were they all just yeah. good plays? Were there tips? Were there just, was he in the right place at the right time? Because getting five is crazy. Yeah, it, it, it was a little bit of everything. There there was a tip. Um, you know, there was, there was a couple where he had just made great plays on the ball. Um, there was one where he just uh, just took the ball away from, from uh, Bueller's kid. 
Um, so it was, it was a little bit of everything. Um, but, but he's a, he's a real coachable kid and, um, you know, he's, he's a student of the game. He watches, he watches, you know, an incredible amount of film, uh, every week. And, and, uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've never seen anything, you know, like that in terms of interceptions. Um, we did have a kid, a middle linebacker named Alex Whitehill, uh, in 2006 that, that had a performance defensively that was, that was that dominant as well. Uh, his was more, his was more just making tackles against a, you know, a nationally ranked touch team that was, you know, that was incredible. But uh, for Tegan to do what he did is, is that's, uh, it's, it's tremendous. McPherson seven and three going against Andover Central seven and three Friday night at Andover Central. McPherson coach Jace Pavlovich is our guest. So you've it's been kind of a strange schedule here for you the last month. You had Mulvane mm-hmm. and Bueller to end the regular season. Then you had Mulvane and Bueller in the first two rounds of the playoffs. <laughs> That's something else I don't think I've ever seen. Yeah, it was uh you know, we weren't real excited to be matched up with Mulvane again. Um you know they're they're a well coached team and they've they've got a lot of you know really good players and and just we're so familiar with one another it's it's hard to beat a good team twice and and we were able to do that with Mulvane and and able to do that with Bueller so it was it was a kind of a crazy turn of events um, we felt like we should have played Independence as opposed to Mulvane in the first round but um, but that's all that's all ancient history now and we're looking forward to to Andover Central. Well, um, yeah, probably just looking forward to another team to be able to play. And what do you know about Andover Central, and how do you think you guys match up? Well, we know that they're, uh, again, another well-coached team, uh, but they have a ton of talent. uh, Their back-end skill position um, is as good as we've seen all year, um, both offensively and defensively. And then then up front, they're, they're, they're really big and really physical. So, you know, there's a reason why they are where they are and and uh you know we know that they play a tough schedule you know primarily five a's and six a's all all season long and and uh you know we we've tried to model our schedule um as tough as we can get it you know we we uh we scheduled junction city and played them for the last couple years and played uh great bend for the last few years and so we you know, again, we, we, we tried to make our schedule as tough as theirs as, as best as we can to, to prepare ourselves for this moment. Jace Pavlovich with us, a uh, long time now, football coach at mm-hmm. McPherson High School. Of course, I've been mm-hmm. around forever, so McPherson uh, <laughs> always that carries that connotation of basketball. It's uh, maybe the basketball, the high school basketball capital capital of the state of Kansas with so much success over so many years time and football kind of has has kind of found its way how did that how did that happen Jace how did football come to be a thing in McPherson kind of joining right alongside basketball yeah um, it it goes back to Tom Young you know uh, coach Young came in in 2006 Uh, as a matter of fact all of us uh, we came in in 2006 uh, with him and and uh, he was he was uh, instrumental in the turnaround. You know, he he got a lot of the basketball players out. Um, in in his coaching style, uh, is favorable to 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 kids today. And I don't think I heard him raise his voice too many times. And and so kids have really taken to that. And uh, you know, it it really doesn't matter if you're a one A 1A or six A. If you have the best athletes in the school out for your sport, you're you're going to have a chance to be pretty good. And and for the last 18 years that uh, that I've been here in McPherson, you know, when we've been able to do that and, and get the best athletes out uh, for football. So, um, you know, really, again, it just starts with uh, Coach Young. And then to have what we've had with uh, with Coach Kinnaman, our basketball coach, and Coach, coach Gerstner, our baseball coach, you know, they – they do support multi-sport athletes just like we do. And, and so again, you know, we're, we're able to share kids and, and, and hopefully not to put too much on them, especially in the summers, but, uh, but it comes down to the athletes that you got on the field. Well, coach, you talked about Tegan a little bit. Uh, give us uh, give us some of the other guys that have stepped up for you this year. Well, Eli Clark defensively up front, you know, he's, 
he's got to be one of the first ones that uh, that's brought up. He's an undersized kid, but he's incredibly, incredibly tough kid. And uh, Javin Alexander, another one that's that linebacker that's been solid all year. Brock Richardson's been solid all year, you know, on the defensive side. Jace, Jay Schreiner, um, he's one of the he's one of the best defensive backs that 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 I've ever been able to coach, and and we've had some really good ones. Um, but you know, and, and that's just defensively. You know, offensively, our offensive line is is getting better each and every week. You know, uh, Owen Fetch at quarterback is you know he's kind of had a rough go. You know, week three, week four, um, we kind of went to a dual uh, dual quarterback system and. And uh, then Owen kind of took over, and he's had a really tremendous uh, end of the year. You know, we have a two-headed monster at tailback with uh, Carlos German and Isaac Barnett. And then, you know, our receivers, this is, you know, top to bottom, you know, one of the best receiving cores we've had in a long time. And, and uh, you know, Blaze Hoover, he's been awesome. Gunnar Schumacher, he's been awesome. You know, Logan Roth, Bishop Brown. I mean, there's there's so many to mention. And, and that's what's really – that's kind of the secret to our success is we don't have just that standout, but we have a bunch of really, really good players that, uh, and, and Owen does a really good job of distributing the ball to them. Well, this is a great time of year. It's fun to watch uh, high school football playoffs. Here you are facing Andover central. Uh, you get this one, you play for the West uh, title and a chance to go to the four a championship game. Jay, thanks so much. We appreciate you coming on the show. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Jace Pavlovich from McPherson High School. And away they go, getting ready this week. Coming down to play Andover Central. Uh, Andover Central is more in our area, but I choose to take a neutral stance I agree. on these games. Yes, I, I take a neutral stance unless Maze is playing. Unless you're Eagles. Unless the Eagles are playing. I got to. Kids go there. What are you supposed well, to what do? Are you, what are you going to do? What are you supposed to do? Just like you're going to probably cheer for Derby if Derby's playing a game. I'm 68. Do I cheer, do I cheer for my old high school? Well, who else are you going to cheer for? I, I do like – I like these coaches. They're uh, very giving of their time. Uh, one of the joys of doing this show is talking to high school coaches. I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if I can – certainly like uh, – Certainly like Coach Clark down at Derby. So what are you saying to him right now? Yeah, good luck. Okay. Well, that's all right. Neutral. Well done. A little neutral. Uh, but, you know, not terribly neutral. Who do they have this week? If it's a Johnson County team, I want them to. To destroy them? Oh, Derby Manhattan. Boy, Manhattan's had uh, had, had their, their way no with Derby. They've had their number. That doesn't happen very often. No. Uh, so we'll see. And then Wichita East gets another crack at Washburn Rural. Boy, Wichita East is amazing. They put up 48 the other night on Northwest. I know. Beat them by three touchdowns. I know. I, I didn't see it. I thought it'd be a good close see, did game. Did not see that coming. No, I did not. But obviously they're rolling right now. So a lot of uh, good stuff coming up Friday night in our high school football playoffs. A lot of good stuff coming up in hour number two of the Bob and Jeff Show. Our conversation with C.J. Moore, college basketball writer for The Athletic at 325. We'll be back in a moment.